record and off we go. So this is um, our Hello You interview series for Positive Passionate Women in Business, where me, I, I'm Kylie Mowbray-Allen and I'm the founder of Positive Passionate Women in Business. And I started this interview series so that we can get to know the women in our huddle. So tonight we're having a lovely chat with Julie Cara, who owns Byron Bay Uveda. How cool is that name? And she's also known as the Byron Food Doctor. So I'd like to say welcome, Julie. I'm really looking forward to 15 questions in 15 minutes with you. And um, are you ready to get going? I'm ready, Kylie. Great, let's get stuck in and get started then. And uh, yeah, thanks for being with me here tonight. So the first question is, tell me something about yourself that others might be surprised to know about you. Mm. Um, people are often surprised when I actually tell them that I'm a grandmother. Oh. Um, so I have a five-year-old granddaughter named Sierra. Wow, that's very exciting. Um, yeah. Just one moment, please, because I've just found that it did not go live. So I might just press pause oh. for a second. Precious, how lovely. Yeah. Um, and so the number two question is, if there was something in your past that you were able to go back and do differently, what would that be? Hmm. Um, I think I would have liked to have studied um, natural holistic medicine when I was younger. Um, instead of waiting until my my 30s to do it um, and I also would have spent more time with my granddaughter as well because oh. I've been pretty busy yeah it's a problem isn't it with owning your own business as glorious it is a, as mm. it is, but yeah there's definitely time sacrifices that's for sure yeah um you're very lucky though that she's Sunshine Coast my mum's grandchildren are all in Australia and she's in New Zealand but oh. We do feel lucky, though, because they're, like, my brother's only 20 minutes away from me. So when mum comes, we're all at least in the same area. Could be worse. We could yeah. be in Europe and all different kinds of places. So That's right. So many people in that boat. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so what do you love most about what you do? Uh, I, I just love helping others. And when they run out of medical options, um, I often have a simple effective way to help and I love cooking so the combination is a real passion for me food is medicine oh yes isn't it just that's one yeah and so what oh actually this would be a good time for you to tell us about your husband or partner I'm um, sorry mm. um, because he's involved in something very similar to you isn't he he is we actually studied together so it's really handy for me to have a partner that also cooks amazing food. Like his food is like a hug on the inside. And we love making medicine together and things like that. So it's really complimentary. I think I'm really lucky. I'm really you? lucky in that regard. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I just and love he loves technology. <laughs> oh, that is extra lucky. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I love that you just said his food's like a hug that's just so gorgeous it is oh yeah God. so what do you love most about what you do um well yeah being able to share what I do with my partner and helping people um when it comes to food because it's quite simple and and easy to achieve people just need to be taught sometimes a few little things that they might not know that they can't find elsewhere that is so so true and i think i grew up in a generation and in a country where we didn't really or the mass i guess the mass people i'm sure there's a lot of people that did know better but we certainly didn't know that about yeah. food as medicine you know I, yeah. I recall really drinking a lot of water as a kid because mm. you know who would want to drink water and so we would have that powdered stuff that you put in it and there was always a jug of that in the fridge that's like at home yeah. fresh I'm not really sure what it's called here now but oh my word like now I couldn't live without my daily huge quantity of water and you know how mm. important you know we learn it's so important for our brain and for everything else so you know yeah. it's a different time isn't it where we have the ability to learn so much more and um, yeah that's you know. right but at the same time, there's so many more additives coming in the foods and 
yeah so I guess yeah there's so many choices i think that's a, one of the big difficulties mm, i'm sure so what is trying it? to negotiate that minefield of choices yeah absolutely mm. so julie what do you yeah. love least about what you do um marketing <laughs> marketing i find quite challenging um i heard someone one of the other ladies talking the other day about graphic design and you only had to create one thing it's the same in marketing you have to do several different things and it's just it can be quite overwhelming especially when you're a creative because you you want to be creative and so this you're spreading yourself across all these different things in marketing and the same as technology. Technology is a pet hate of mine. Um, I'm really lucky that my partner is more that way inclined. But having said that, it's wonderful because we can connect with other people and family so if they're not close by. Yes. Yeah, there's definitely two sides to that sword on all of those things. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Wow. So, Julie, if you weren't doing this, what would you be doing? Um... I used to be a teacher, so I, I expect I'd be teaching and I plan to be teaching some Ayurveda one day in the future. So at the right time, we'll Wonderful. see so what when did you that happens. Um, I was a high school teacher for over 10 years and I taught mainly science and biology, um, but I also taught maths, I taught English, I taught art. Jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's been your biggest success in your working life? So what are you most proud of in your working life? Um, to be honest, just finishing my studies in Ayurveda. Um, it took me over several years um, to finish my studies in Ayurveda. So that's my most recent success, but I'd also have to say some of my years of teaching young people were really fulfilling um, in the 12 years that I was a teacher. Kids are beautiful, even teenagers. <laughs> I have one and she's so awesome. So I'm with you on that. <laughs> They're so amazing. I have a 10 year old stepson. And he is incredible. He really is. He, he, he's such a wise little thing. He leads the way sometimes. I listen to him and I'm an adult. <laughs> oh, that's so good. He's He'd beautiful. love to have you. That's for sure. Oh, he's beautiful. We hang out and create stuff together. Cool. So who are your dream clients and what type of job do you like doing the most with those clients? Oh, my dream client. <laughs> Deepak Chopra. I'd love to sit down and have a chat with him. No, I'm kidding. So Who am I to say that? <laughs> um, someone who listens and follows my advice as a practitioner, just simply that. Um, my health plans are always, they're, they're always changing. They're far more than medicine based um, and they can include simple things, even just advice like walking in the forest or on a beach or simple meditation practices they can make all the difference and give you a lot of success so just simply someone that listens and follows the advice i'm with you a hundred percent even though our businesses are worlds apart i am definitely mm. with you on that so what yeah. challenges do you see impacting your industry and that can mean relating to what's going on in the world right now or just you know mm. in general in your business I think regardless of what's going on in the world right now, it's access to good quality products and medicines. Um, we, we get a great deal from India, but they can often be poor quality. Um, that's why as part of my studies, I actually learned how to make medicine. So I can, I used to be in quality control too. So I know the difference between good quality and, and inferior quality. Um, but there are restrictions on how we are legally able to market what we do. Um, and it can be an issue going up against the medical industry. So there are restrictions on what we can do. Mm, goodness. Yeah, which is a shame. Yes, indeed. So, Julia, yeah. when you were little, what did you want to be when you grew up? Mm, 
I never wanted to grow up. <laughs> yeah, um, but I think I wanted to be like a model. I used to like I used to listen to this song by George Michael called Too Funky, and there's like these like supermodels like going down the catwalk and their couture and. Yeah, I think I, I wanted to do something like that. That looked like fun, getting all dressed up and lipstick and looking all glamorous. <laughs> You'll need to put yeah. that in the, in the chat, in the comments um, underneath this on Facebook, a YouTube link to that or something, because I don't know that song and I really want to know oh, that song now. I want to see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll send it to you. It's quite oh, fun to watch. That would be awesome. All Empowered right. with women. Ah, cool. So if you're an animal, what would you like to be? An animal? Hmm. Well, just the other day, I was thinking about this because I'd seen some of the other interviews and I saw out the back of my house this white heron. It was like standing at a, at a lake and they're so still and serene and graceful. Um, so yeah, I think to be still and serene is quite a cool thing to be in this world. Absolutely. Aren't they beautiful? Well, yeah, they're right. stunning. Thank you. If you were in a movie or a character in a movie, which one would it be and who would you be and why? Oh, hmm. Sophia Loren. She's like an actress from a long time ago and I really admire her because she's she's really she's classic and she's beyond to learn confidence and yeah which, so Sophia Loren in particular do you think oh I'm not sure I haven't watched one for a long time maybe I should start watching them again yeah, I was just thinking I need to do that too. It's time she's I She's very glamorous. Year old, isn't yeah, she? but she has real poise, you know, and she's got a bit of sass, you know. Yep. Awesome. She's, yeah, she's pretty cool. <laughs> so if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? Um, well, I actually have a Greek heritage and I have been to Greece. So if I could live anywhere in the world, I love Australia. I also kind of like my heritage as well. So Greece is somewhere, maybe in a quiet fishing village on a little plot of land where I could just grow some veggies and cook and grow flowers and herbs. Yeah, that's me all over. And yeah. siestas. <laughs> yeah. well, they're probably not called siestas, are they? But I remember when I was in Greece how much I loved it when they would just stop and they'd all go off and nap. And I thought that oh, was funny. yeah, and they get up really late. You can't find breakfast anywhere till about midday. Isn't that great? Yeah. I love it. Okay, yeah. so we're up to question number 13. So we're nearly there. So um, what does it mean for you to be a positive, passionate woman in business? Mm. Just being able to practice my art. Uh, Ayurveda, it's a science and it's medicine and it includes many things, but I consider it an art and that's why it's a passion for me. Um, and without any restrictions or bureaucracy and for anyone that chooses to work with me and um, just freedom, freedom of choice um, is what we should all have. So, yeah, that's what, that's how I'd like business to be. Gorgeous. I love that. Yeah. So uh, what are you most proud of in your life rather than just your business life? What about your whole life? What am I most proud of? I think every mother is going to say they're proud of their child. So I have a daughter. She's 25 and I'm very proud of her. We've been through a lot together, especially when she was younger, as, younger, as I'm sure a lot of women have experienced and um, just to get through it together and, um, and now what she's doing with her study and raising a child, I think it, it's standard. I'm proud of my daughter. I love that so much. Yeah. So this is your 15th question. What's one, okay. tip, the, what's one tip that you can share 
that helps you stay positive when things are challenging? Hmm. My number one tip is always the same and it's meditation. There are so many different techniques, but meditation is, is number one for me. And, and just also just reflecting like on the day, you know, um, okay, what could I, what could I have done a little bit better and make a small change or fine tune something, but it always comes back to meditation. No matter what happens, you can stop anytime and just be still and calm your mind down. And so that your mind has a chance to think more positively. Jolie, I just love that. And I want to tell you something. So my daughter um, goes to the school. She's in year 11 this year. And when she started in year seven, they brought a new thing into the school. Um, she might have been the first year that they did it. But <clears throat> excuse me, four days a week, not Wednesdays, but every other day. At quarter to 12, the whole school stops. And they call it an examine, but it's basically a meditation. And mm. the, the teacher, so they can either put their head on their desk or they can lie on the floor or, or just sit and close their eyes. And the teacher takes them through a guided meditation. Well, that's how, what I would call it. And they examine what they did in the last 24 hours. Then they think about what they want to do for the next 24 hours and what they could do differently. And then they think about how they could have been a kinder person. And each week has a different topic that they focus on with the week. But anyway, I was at a parent meeting once when she was in year seven and the person that um, comes up with the examines every week came and showed us. And so, you know, we all sat their eyes closed and we went through one. I could not believe it. And I just thought if every school and every workplace did that every day, what a different world that we would all be living in. That just that moments of reflection and the being really mindful of what you've done and what you're doing and how you could do it better. And it blew my mind. And I have to say my daughter yeah. now after doing it for all these years, absolutely loves it. And is a much calmer person than I've ever been. <laughs> and I'm sure so much of that is from doing this beautiful practice every day. Mm. I just think it's gorgeous. I'm so happy to hear that um, because those things were not in play, you know, when I was teaching in high school, so things are moving forward positively. It's, yes, it's and great to hear. Catholic school, it's not an alternative school in any way, um, but they're mm. just clearly recognising the importance of that. And I just think it's beautiful. So I'd love to do another um, live with you one day and we can just focus on meditation and the importance mm. of it. And you could perhaps talk about, um, you know, your tips on how to meditate and all kinds of things. That'd be lovely if you'd like to do that because I'm, I'm really yeah, it would be, be a pleasure. Cool, that would be great. Well, Julie, that's our 15 questions in 50 minutes, and of uh, 15 minutes, and of course we went over, and I, I don't mean to, but often we do. But I just love, I'm really loving the series, and I'm really loving getting to know our members better. So thank you so much for taking the time and being here with me today. And, um, oh, no, not at all. Thank you, Kylie. You work so hard. I really admire everything that you're doing. You're oh, doing thank a great you. job. Thank you so much. But like you, I just really love what I do. And so it doesn't yeah. feel it doesn't feel hard when you I love yeah. what you do. So, yeah, thanks for saying That's that. Right. Um, and so for all of you that want to know how to connect with Julie, you can do that on, in the caption. There's um, links to the Facebook and links to the website, etc. And you can track Julie down through her own personal Facebook as well and send her a private message and get in touch with uh, Julie at Byron Bay Vader. And yeah, that is such a cool name. So maybe I need to add a 16th question and ask everyone how they came up with their business name. But maybe that'll be um, <laughs> the next interview series down the track. We'll come back to that. All right. All right, thank you so much. You have a wonderful night. It was great to see you. Thanks. Cheers, Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.